It's a chilling incident that has come to light from Goa, where a 39-year-old CEO of a startup was arrested with a bloodied body of her son in a bag. The details will shock you further. The woman, Suchana Seth, is an entrepreneur from West Bengal who was residing in Bengaluru with her son. The mother-son duo visited North Goa and was set to return to Bengaluru on the midnight of the 8th of January, when this incident is said to have taken place. The Goa police has confirmed that when Suchana Seth decided to check out, the hotel staff found blood stains in the room. While she arrived with her son, she checked out alone, raising further suspicions. Police have also said that Suchana insisted she be given a taxi to Bengaluru, even though she was advised to take a flight, which would have been a far more economical option. When questioned on her son, she claimed that her son was staying back in Goa, but the address she provided for the whereabouts of her son were also incorrect. Now, this led to further suspicion and ultimately attracted the attention of the police who detained her and found her son's body in the bags that she was travelling. That is 8 early morning, she demanded for a uh, taxi to Bangalore. So, uh, people uh, working in the hotel said uh, to travelling to Bangalore by taxi will be very expensive compared to flight. You can book by flight, but she insisted on uh, for a taxi. Once she checked out the staff of the hotel, when they were cleaning the room, they found some red uh, coloured stains which they suspected to be blood. And there was another suspicion because when she came, she came with a boy and she left, there was no boy. So immediately they informed the police station. Through the driver, he made uh, contact with the lady also and asked about the whereabouts about the boy. And when she said uh, uh, the boy has been uh, uh, asked to stay with one of her friends in Madagao. When P.A. Fatoda went uh, to verify that address, address was found to be fake. Because the background of the woman in question makes it for an unsuspecting murder. Suchana Seth is the CEO of a Bangalore-based startup Mindful AI Lab and was named among the 100 brilliant women in AI ethics for 2021. She's an expert in artificial intelligence ethics and data scientist and is also holds patents in natural language processing. Her estranged husband, who currently lives or was in Indonesia, has returned to India and will be questioned by Goa police tomorrow. While the police maintains that they haven't yet zeroed in on the motive of the murder, but is looking into her troubled marital relationship. Now, there are details that we have accessed as far as the post-mortem that was carried out in Chitradurga of Karnataka. In fact, details accessed are that the child was killed more than 36 hours ago. That the child died of strangulation or smothering. There's no blood injury mark or signs of struggle and the veins of the child are swollen. The face and nose bleeding due to suffocation is the information coming in at this point of time, suggesting that the child was murdered more than 36 hours prior to this. So more breaking news coming in at this point of time is as far as the woman trying to commit suicide by slitting her left hand, but thereafter she changed her mind and packed the body and left to Bengaluru with the tourist taxi costing her 30,000 rupees. Let's go across to Neha who's been reporting on the story. Neha, you're in Chitra Durga. At this point of time, we understand that the family has departed with the mortal remains of the four-year-old child. The father also accompanying uh, the mortal remains. It's a shocker of a story, but uh, really the manner in which the post-mortem has been carried out and the details emerging from it really give us an insight into the mind of what was happening as far as this lady is concerned and the manner in which she actually went about this murder. Well, absolutely, Madhav, a case that sent shockwaves down the spines of every Indian watching this story today. Uh, what is, of course, you know, important from the post-mortem report here is the fact that the doctor here says that the child was murdered more than 36 hours ago. The details that we had so far suggested that this woman was apprehended, in fact, you know, last night or in the wee hours of this morning in Chitradurga. So now the question arises about how she went on to really carry out this murder. When was this child murdered? Very unfortunate fortunate that, you know, uh, this child, in fact, was possibly strangulated or suffocated to death, is what the police have said, with zero signs of him, uh, you know, resisting or protesting this. It's really quite unfortunate that even at this point, as the family is, of course, you know, moving the body uh, for the last rites to Bengaluru City, that the woman over here, in fact, you know, has so far not confessed to the police about the motive. That still remains unclear at this point. While we're given to understand that a troubled relationship with her 
husband, in fact, you know, could have possibly been one of the. Well, perhaps only the police can throw light on that, time. and we'll wait for those details coming in. But a shocking murder, uh, filicide, no less. Uh, Neha, thanks so much for joining us with that update. And for more on that, in fact, we're asking our viewers to call us, join us, and express your views on this. Our panel of experts are here to answer your queries. We have with us P.K. Jain, former additional DGP of Maharashtra. Dr. Chinu Agarwal, psychologist and psychotherapist, director of Feeling Minds, is with us. Priya Chitty Rajgopal, partner of Multiversal Advisory, also with us. Let me start with you first, Mr. Jain. And in your long experience of policing, sir, what drives people of perhaps non-criminal backgrounds, from the best we know that she's a professional, a very successful one, a CEO for that matter, someone of that kind of professional success to carry out this kind of a murder of one's own child. I mean, that requires a different level of, uh, you know, uh, a derangement or a mental state, whatever one chooses to call it. Mr. Jain. Hi, Namaskar. Uh, see, I would like to uh, call it a crime of passion. Uh, apparently, uh, she came with the child. Her uh, relations with the husband are not very uh, normal. They were going to separate or maybe there was a court order for the husband to visit the child once a week. And probably the mother was not happy about it. See, what happened in this case was, um, uh, you know, this is uh, kind of vengeance, vengeance against the husband and his family, if at all. Uh, I mean, I, I would not place... Uh, uh, the police will, of course, come out with the uh, motive theory, so it is too early to say that. But on the face of it, it appears that she was, she did not want the child to have any relationship with the father. And because there was a custody battle and the father had won some relief, is probably what drove her to uh, this step. She did not want to share the child with the husband. And, you know, these uh, uh, crimes are committed... Uh, uh, the people think that they are very smart, they can get away uh, by committing horrendous uh, uh, acts like this. But eventually they leave some trace behind. In this case, I would really uh, commend the role played by the hotel staff and the taxi driver, who without getting ruffled, took her to the police station and got her arrested. Right. So I, I think, uh, you know, as a police officer, I look at with a with an absolute uh, lack of emotions, uh, you know, performing the police duty, the child's body has been found, uh, the necessary process investigation will be carried out. Uh, since there are no injury marks on the boy's uh, body, that means he must have been smothered to death. I mean, that's what the postmortem notes also say now. Right. So I think the collection of evidence and presenting it in a cogent manner to the court is what is important. Absolutely. And sir, uh, before I go across to our other panelists, Dr. Chinu Agarwal and Priya Chetty Rajgopalan, we have two of our viewers joining us. Rajendra is with us from Bengaluru. Yes, Rajendra, go ahead. The police station and got arrested. Yeah, Rajendra, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Uh, sir, in this case, uh, I... There is a definite case of uh, difference of opinion between the husband and wife, and uh, she herself has told that you know she is uh, not happy with the the court. Yes. But uh, Sroshana should have been taught. You know she is an uh, uh, experienced one and uh, in abroad and absolutely, CEO. absolutely. Sir, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting, but there's some audio disturbance there. I'd like to thank you for joining us, sir. We have Dr. Mitra joining us from Mumbai. Yes, Dr. Mitra, your views on this extremely shocking case. Yeah, hello. Yes, Dr. Mitra, go ahead. Yeah, actually, we were listening to a song in childhood that we have heard 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 इनका चाहे जो अपने पति के साथ था जो भी था इन्होंने अपने खुद के लड़के का मर्डर कर देना ये तो मुझे लगता है कि मैंने जिंदगी में पहली बार सुना है और ऐसा मैंने सोचा भी कभी नहीं था Absolutely, absolutely. That's why this is such a shocking case, I guess, for all of us, because this is something that uh, many cannot imagine, especially with a helpless four-year-old. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Dr. Purva is also with us from Mumbai. Dr. Purva. Yeah, good evening. It is very sad to see that a mother kills her four-year-old child. They say a mother has milk of human kindness, but the way she strangled her child, it's shocking. Now, what punishment should she get? She should get life imprisonment till her natural death. 
and will, that will be a deterrence for others. It is very shocking that such incidents take place and a mother kills her own child whom she has kept in a womb for more than nine months. It is very shocking and now law should All right. and justice should take its course. All right. Justice should take its course. Dr. Chinu Agarwal, in fact, I'd like you to come in on this. A lot of outrage. I mean, people are just not able to wrap their heads around the fact that a mother who's still nurturing a child because, you know, a four-year-old is, you know, such a small age for any child that one cannot imagine any parent, leave alone mother or father, anyone taking this kind of a extreme step because the consequences of it are one thing. But, you know, just what kind of mentality does one have to do this? Yeah, it's naturally very, very shocking and it uh, 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 the reaction of the people is understandable. But what is more uh, surprising is that maternal filicide is very known phenomenon. It is there since ages all over the world and it is also researched very well. And we know by research evidence that there are, there are five known reasons for maternal filicide, and it is sometimes accompanied by suicide also of the mother. In and fact, she did uh, she did people, allegedly attempt suicide as per some reports yeah. that we were just breaking in. Yeah. Yeah. So thirty to seventy percent of the women who kill their own children are do also commit suicide and 15 to 20% of them succeed. Um, also, uh, it is known that uh, the, out of the five reasons, one of the reasons is to take revenge from the child's father. So one reason is, uh, it is called as altruistic filicide, where she feels that the child should not be living in this world which is uh, uh, harmful for the child and that's why she kills. One could be that she is under the influence of some psychiatric disorder where she's, uh, you know, hearing some hallucinating commands to kill the child and that's why she kills. One of the reasons is that she's been abusing and maltreating the child and she might not have thought that the child would die, but uh, it dies. And one of the reasons is that the mother could be under the influence of substance. Uh, and she, uh, because of her own depression or because of her own stresses, she's consuming a lot of substance because of that. She couldn't at that moment comprehend her action and she commits this filicide. Well, all are very, very, uh, all are very disturbing scenarios indeed. And let me quickly bring in Priya Chetty Rajgopal. Priya Chetty Rajgopal, at the end of the day, you know, one expects that when someone, of course, pressures is one thing. I mean, the IT industry, the AI, etc. industries would have their own kinds of pressures and that would be perhaps telling on CEOs. But, you know, uh, this is a person who has actually won an award for AI ethics, quote-unquote. And uh, this is the kind of act uh, that uh, she has committed. Perhaps leaves us all feeling how vulnerable every human being is, no matter how successful they are. Um, my condolences. I mean, this is just one of those shocking incidents that one reads about and, uh, you know, in the, in the middle of a murder mystery or something. It's okay at a distance, but right now when you see something so close, somebody from Bangalore and a four-year-old child, uh, my mind is very, um, you know, all over the place saying, what, what is it that is the right thing to say at this point, you know? But the, I think it brings to light a few things. I mean, a great sense of tragedy for a child that's lost its very, you know, promising life. And uh, trying to understand and trying to ascribe motive, the fact is it's already happened. A child is dead and a mother has been driven to filicide of, uh, you know, destroying a, her own child's life uh, for reasons known or unknown. The fact that people feel such a sense of pressure and such a sense of, uh, you know, inability to move to a, you know, a, a source of comfort when they're in distress or mental illness uh, is, is a, is, this is a case in point. Uh, one doesn't know what was going on in her mind that drove, drove her to this uh, situation. But perhaps if she had someone to talk to, uh, perhaps if she didn't feel that this was something that uh, this was the only solution. I'm not ascribing, you know, a, a slip through motive for her saying maybe that's why she's done it. The fact is the deed is horrendous. It's inexplicable. 
it is almost beyond redemption. You know, uh, it's, 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 it's difficult for even anyone to talk about how something like this would happen. But in the business world where you're seeing people manage so many different roles and there's a lot of things that are happening at the same time, uh, a change of personal situation, you right. know, a divorce, so, uh, can put a lot of pressure. But I think it's time for us as, you know, in, in mental, for mental health professionals at the workplace, for a larger focus on mentoring, yes. for a larger focus on people supporting, that yes. these things can, if possible. I well, I think I think that those people. last points that you made right there are the perhaps the most important things we've heard through this entire debate because we all work in various kinds of high pressure situations, and any sort of change in the situation back at home can affect any one of us as individuals. Perhaps the challenge is to ensure that you are able to tide over the situation and that nobody is forced to resort to any such extreme step. Of course, we don't know the entire facts of this case. This is all that we are reporting on the basis of what police are currently telling us. Perhaps investigations will reveal more. We really can't say for sure, but for the moment, certainly an incident that has sent shockwaves throughout India. I'd like to thank all our callers for joining us, our viewers for joining us, and Mr. P.K. Jain, Dr. Chinu Agarwal, Priya Chetty Rajgopalan, thanks so much for joining us this evening.